I'm Lorraine Sommerfeld and this is the Lemonade Car Show. As cars become more and more electrical devices on wheels, they're more prone to electrical issues. Today on our Ask a Mechanic show, we'll be highlighting electrical problems. Please feel free to call us with any car related questions. Lemonade is brought to you by Omnic, that's Ontario's vehicle sales regulator, and we're produced by the Automobile Protection Association. The APA fights for you, the consumer, and provides information and news on all parts of the industry. Visit our website at apa.ca or reach us by phone at 416 204 1444. Joining me today is Giordini, the president of the APA, and Chris Muir, he's our mechanic and a professor at Centennial College. We'll be taking your calls this evening at 800 968 7836. Welcome back. Oh, it's great to be here. So nice to have you. It's been a while. It has been. You've been yeah. busy. Been busy. A lot going it's on at APA. Been busy here and tonight. Yeah. I'm really happy to be on the set. So we can start right off. We'll get to you whenever yeah, we yeah. get to you. I'm just here. You. Yeah. I'm okay with it. You're just set decorations. So <laughs> 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 start what, what's been the most pressing well uh, last week the APA was before the Senate Committee on Transportation and Communications and we're they're looking now finally at overhauling our motor vehicle safety legislation and we know the changes started in July so some big changes came through in July on safety issues and there's things that the that's APA provincial so okay. that's a safety inspection but okay. this is federal so this is what the law around um, recalls okay we don't have one People think that we do, but mm -hmm. actually it's the Americans who have recall legislation. Under our law, all you have to do is get a letter. So the car maker is only required legally to send you a notice that the car is dangerous or that it could injure you. So all the recalls that we do get a lot, we do get a lot of recalls. Oh, yes, and what happens is we're lucky we are on the coattails of the American legislation. So the Americans early on realized a letter probably wouldn't do it. Yeah. And so they amended their original safety act like in the late 60s uh, to say that it, it had to also be a letter with a free repair. So we've been playing wing and a prayer for all these years. You know most of the time it works well uh -huh. where it doesn't work is if the Americans aren't looking at the case mm -hmm. and Canada thinks the car maker should recall then you end up with um, a form of a standoff and then the government al almost always caves. What's interesting now we have a, a, a more permissive minister I think he has a better handle of the file as well mm -hmm. because he's he has his own background in transportation. He's an yeah. astronaut. <laughs> so um, uh, the, they have actually now been using the media, as you know, because it's yeah. been in your columns. When Transport Canada cannot get a car maker to do the right thing now, in some cases they're actually going out to the public to collect data. So this would be an improvement to the act. It would allow them to ask for recall. Um, other thing, real-time lookups. So, so in other words, if you punched in your VIN, you wouldn't just find out that the car has three recalls since it was new, you'd also found out, find out if the vehicle had actually gone in and was fixed. So, so that's an important this step This would be as a well. huge thing for consumers, especially if they're buying Well, if a you're used buying car, used, it would also, yeah. I think, finally get around the objection, I hope, of the industry to actually doing anything about recalled cars mm -hmm. that are being resold, because at that point they would be able to check and tell you, listen, um, the car's got an open recall or go and get it fixed before they resell it. Because for consumers, when you go to buy a new car or a used car, it's overwhelming already. There's so much information and you have to sort good from bad. And we're learning about fake news and real news now. And it's the same in the car industry. And I would argue the fake news existed before the internet in the car industry. <laughs> because well, that's true. There were a lot of very friendly. Uh, friendly car reporting in some of the magazines. Say, I, I think it's still incredibly compromised and I'm probably not you supposed to You know you have options that, now <laughs> though because you can look yeah. out. It's not so hard anymore. The web has democratized the information. There's also I would argue, I think you probably see this too on the repair side, a lot of kind of very bright people that can get their hands on a car and maybe have only a few hundred readers but if you find their article or their blog or whatever yeah. it is you might still have very interesting information oh, it used to be very the, hard and the peer-to-peer -peer thing can be incredibly helpful yeah, because too. you can share the information which is great right so but to yeah. get back to the app yeah. you have um, real-time recall lookups they also want the ability to give the car makers tickets yes because right now they can have them charged mm -hmm. But it's almost like a criminal offense, so the, they're just hesitant. To they don't know how to do it. Yeah. They haven't done it since 1992. That was the last time for a car maker, a major yeah. car maker, and that was Chrysler, and they lost. So this so would the idea would be: listen, you know, when you do recall in Canada, sorry, recall. When you send a letter in Canada, you're supposed to no, uh, report on your correction rates for the next two years. Mm -hmm. Some companies 
don't, like Chrysler will take a year to put the parts in the system, you're waiting for your recall parts, and then they run out the last two, three quarters, and then there's no consequence. So now they want to say, look, if your rate is below 50% or 40%, you're not getting the people, you actually have to get up-to-date addresses, you've got to resend your notice, you've got to bring people in. So they have to do it in a timely fashion or fines will... In theory. So in this theory. is to give them the framework. It, it really, when you look at that act, it's like a house that was built in the 60s mm -hmm. and only ever got a coat of paint and some bad repairs. Yeah, since. I live in one of those. Yeah, yeah I okay, so, like, yeah. <laughs> so the recall part is like your kitchen. That's the big part. But yeah. there's a lot of other very good bones inside that have to be fixed. So that's, uh, for example, the notices of um, the... the percentages of correction, the real-time lookup. We're hoping it will modernize not only the act, but eventually the way the government does business. They're also saying, I don't think they'll ever have the guts to do it, but they actually say they would like, if a company is really offside a lot, to do what GM had to do in the States after the ignition switch issue. Um, the government appointed a monitor to go in and actually work inside of GM, paid for by GM, but his boss or her boss is the... Um, is the government and they found that that actually is a very effective way to drive a culture a good culture of safety gm now has gone from being one of the, clearly one of the worst companies for recall compliance mm -hmm. i would tell you from what we see very timely um, much better notices they even went back in their closet and pulled out skeletons that nobody would have ever found 1997 pontiacs you know like well, no it looks one like knew. mom coming home to live with mm -hmm. you. Like, well, she's gonna well, find some stuff. Well, you know, yeah. you're gonna, you're Somehow gonna clean. it works. It's not just punitive. Yeah. yeah. It's not a giant hammer that will randomly come down on a Volkswagen when seven other people are cheating and eight countries were looking the wrong way and never caught them. Right. Is there I mean, something you're sliding there, like a yeah, sort of tweet in there. Exactly. Yeah. So the idea is, what you want is something <laughs> that works yeah. toward uh, encouraging good behaviors yeah. as opposed to only a negative thing that will you could use once every 20 years to really pound someone for very well, bad behavior. This is how behavior. you raise children. You reward good behavior and ignore the bad stuff. <laughs> it also has, I mean, you cannot do one without, if there's no yeah. sanction, corporations aren't kids. They yeah. don't love you that much, yeah. perhaps, but yeah. if there's no sanction, you will not be respected. But at the same time, the more creative way to get compliance, I think, yeah. is to have a full circle approach. And one yeah. of the things, for example, is the government has these stats these lousy recall correction rates are secret. There's no reason for that. 20 years ago, before there was an internet, you could call and say, hi, what's the deal on that? And say, oh yeah, that's at 42%. Okay, thank you. And you'd get the word out in however method you could so that more people would become aware. Today, they don't give you that information. So it's a mistake. And that too, we're hoping would change. So get some sunlight onto it and yep, change the exactly. culture of... Yep. Yeah, and uh, at that point, the Auditor General, I should say this also, came out with a report on Transport Canada this week. Um, it's really bad. I mean, it's not anything we didn't already know, but they, were, they really went in and figured out where some of the weaknesses are. And they're kind of, it's, this law, these changes would kind of give them, I hope, a window onto like a different kind of future going forward. Now, I know you were testifying, or whatever yeah. the word is. Um, W were they receptive to the changes um, you wanted? So this is unusual. It's a Senate committee. Normally you're before the House of Commons. Mm -hmm. And uh, these were, um, many of them conservative senators, so people from uh, appointed by a previous government. Totally, it, it struck me as very much behind this kind of thing. Very much interested in the law and order aspect of it as well. <laughs> Maybe, I mean, for us, it is a law and order legislation. Yeah. So for, for us, that's good yeah. to be on the wave. Yeah. Um, the car dealers, oddly enough, were there. And really, they and the APA are, were not far apart at all. Wow. The car industry was interesting. They were saying the car industry, meaning the car makers, yeah. the representative for the domestic car makers felt that the dealers should be responsible. See, that, that's just mind-boggling Yeah, he said, yeah. well, we don't fix them, right? If you're going to make it net mandatory to fix the cars, well, we don't. problem. Dealers. Well, somebody built the car. Yeah. It wasn't the guy at the dealer that jammed yeah. the I car know, together it incorrectly. Was, yeah. It was yeah. wild. To us, yeah. isn't it? I mean, to a bunch of senators who aren't in the car business, yeah. it kind of flew. I thought, this guy's pretty smooth putting it out there. Yeah, it's that a good thing you were there. <laughs> well, yes. <laughs> and uh, so, but I thought, wow, what golf. And yeah. so, you know, the point is, of course, the car maker, if it if has plenty of ways to encourage a dealer to do recall repairs. At this, the first thing, by the way, starts just with paying for it, which they do, yeah. and then supplying the parts. 
and then getting the notices out. We've not heard of dealers refusing to do recall work. They actually like it. It brings our customers back in. Well, cooperation is wonderful, and it should be working. The Lemonade Car Show brought to you by OMVIC, Ontario's motor vehicle sales regulator, returns after this short break. When we come back, we'll be taking your calls, 800-968-7836.